Hi, I'm Paul from Paul's Fishing Kites. Today we're off the mouth of the Waipu River and we're going to run a boat long line single handed. So I'll run through the whole thing step by step for you and at the end of this you'll be an expert. The traces on a Paul's Fishing Kites long line are stored on these neat and compact trace racks and you'll see that there are traces on both sides. We top and tail them so that that makes it easier to bait them and to run the baited hooks directly from the trace rack. Another option, if you choose to run the traces directly from the trace rack, is one of our trace rack holders. And they'll fit in any rod holder and they make life a breeze. They also give you more storage room in the boat because you can store the trace rack on the gunnel. You'll notice that the hooks have an appendage and this prevents small fish from swallowing the hook and becoming gut hooked and gut hooking of small fish is a major source of wastage in our fishery. You have to throw them back and when you throw them back after being gut hooked they die. We also have floating beads on these traces. These floating beads keep the line up off the bottom and many of our customers swear by them. Almost inevitably, the biggest fish of the day is taken on a double float trace. The Paul's Fishing Kites inline clip are the most tangle free long line clip in the market. All of the line that you need for running a long line from a boat are stored on our 3 to 1 ratio reel. One turn of the handle gives you three turns on the spool drum. They're fitted with a ratchet so that if you decide that you want to lock the reel off, just flop the ratchet in place. The first line that's on the reel is the float line. So as you'll see later, we just run the float directly from the reel. There's a shock cord further down inside here. That's where we clip the grapples. And this really makes life easy. And it just drops straight into any rod holder. Ideally have a vertically mounted rod holder because that makes retrieval and setting far easier. All of our long lines also come with grapples so you put a grapple each end between the hook section and that just keeps some tension on the main line and prevents the fish from tangling the main line up. And the only other thing that you'll need will be a float. You can either make up your own float out of a big 20 litre container or buy these cray floats which are highly visible but if you're really going to be setting your line a long way offshore you can't go past one of these flags. You can see them from miles away. The first thing that we have to do is bait the traces. So I've got this large chili bin so what I'm going to do is just lay the traces out on the chili bin lid and run them directly from there. Today we've got these beautiful squid, they're quite large, if the fish are big you could use squid this size hull, but I think we'll cut them in half on the first set and see how we get on. If there's plenty of big fish around we might put a few whole ones on the next set. The maximum number of hooks that you're allowed on a long line in New Zealand is 25, so we'll just take a few of these cut them up, one, two, it's a big one, we'll cut three out of that, and 25. Always look after your bait, so we'll put the rest of this bait back on ice for later. So that's it, now we're ready to put the baits on. You'll notice on our traces that we use recurve hooks. Um, we use these hooks because we've done an extensive research project and far and away this particular hook pattern came out way above all the rest in the number of fish that it catches and we've put a wire appendage on the back of the hook and that's to prevent undersized fish from becoming gut hooked. If you're using the old kind of jap hooks just be aware that you're wasting a huge amount of undersized fish that get gut hooked you have to throw them back and you're throwing them back dead unnecessarily. To bait any circle type hook, work out which way you want the bait to hang and put the hook through that way first at the top end, then turn it and bring it back through again. If it's a really soft bait or a very small bait, you can actually twist it and put it through a third time, 
but I find that's ample. The bait hangs beautifully, irresistible to any snapper. So you just carry on, we'll keep baiting the rest of the traces. Okay, well that's it, that's the 25 hooks baited. So all we need to do now is just turn around and I think we'll just run it straight out the back here, back towards the Wangarei heads and see what we catch. And if you're single handed, it's pretty important to have everything close on hand. I've got a float here for one end, I'm going to put the flag on the other end. I've got my two grapples here ready to clip on when required and I've got all my baited traces just laid out neatly in front of me. So I'll just kick the motor over, start idling along. I'll clip my float onto the end of the float line, throw it over the side. Now I'm just waiting until I see the black cord come off this line and that's where I'll clip on the first grapple and then we're ready to start putting the traces on. So we must be getting close now. So I'll just uh, slow down. It looks like the black cord's just a little way down there. And that was it. So I've just popped the ratchet on and now we're ready to start popping the traces and the grapple on. We put a safety trace on our grapples. That's so that if the grapple happens to snag, you just lose the grapple. You don't actually lose your main line or anything else important. Put the ratchet back off. You'll notice these little white stoppers on the line, and they act as stops for the inline long line clip. You pull the clip over the line, the clip can run up and down between the stoppers, and the stoppers are placed at two metre intervals. So the fish can pick up the bait, run with the bait. When the clip hits the stopper, that sets the hook into the fish. So it's an active fishing long line. We let two stops go between clipping on the traces, and that's so that even if you get a fish on each end heading towards each other, they can't actually tangle the two traces together. It's a tangle free system. We've got about five to ten knots of wind blowing today, so the line's just drifting out at a nice easy pace. Just clip a trace on, let two stoppers go, another trace, and before you know it, they're all out there. Here's the last shock cord, so we're ready to clip on the last grapple. It's important to give the line a good stretch before you let it go. We'll tension it up after we put the buoy on, but good tension on the line gives more shock when the line clip hits that stopper, it sets the hook faster and deeper. So that's the last grapple on the bottom. We'll just run the rest of the leader out. So we're just looking for the last white cord. Because this is the most inshore line we're setting today, we'll just use the little boy. Tension the line a bit. That's it. Just wait for the fish. Okay, well there's the orange boy and they're very easy to find and we've left the darker boy on the inside of it. So we just need to pop forward about another 200 metres and then we should find our inside boy. As I come up to it, I'll just knock the boat out of gear, lean over and pick it up. There it is. Put the motor back in gear. Okay, so we've picked up the buoy and I've driven about 100 or 200 metres towards the shore just to stretch it out. Then I can turn the motor off and that'll allow us just to drift lazily back over the line and by the time I get closer to it, I should be right over the grapple. The tension's coming on now. So I'll put the motor out of gear. 
and the long line now is perfectly downwind laid out behind us. The tension's starting to come off this as the wind catches us. So I just clip that line back onto the end of that line. And now I can just take my time and wind in at the speed that we're drifting because we've lined up so perfectly. And this is actually one of the really good things about setting with the wind. It's really easy to keep over your line as you're hauling it back in. So here comes the first grapple. Not a skerrick of bait left, eh? So the baits were too big for the fish. That's actually what happened there. Well that's the last of the hooks and now it's just a matter of taking the grapple off and winding in the last boy. That's it, we're in. Just about legal. Another one coming here. Not big fish. The next one might be a better one. Ah, nice fish. On the floating beads, eh? Another one, he's legal. Legal, but not quite 30, and we'd like them at 30. Oh, we've got something big down there. Might not be a snapper though. No, it's a snapper, it's a nice one. Ugh. That's a nice fish. Again, biggest fish, double beads. Wow, these hooks really get in there. Okay. Just move the reel over this side. These flags are great, I mean you can see them from miles away. Well that wasn't too bad at all. We spent about an hour drifting around with the rods and we caught nothing. One haul of a 25 hook long line and we've got a beautiful feed of fish. We've sold hundreds of these long lines and it's amazing how many of our customers have reported great catches on the long lines, even on those days when the fish are too shy or fickle to catch on rods and reels. Many of our customers are also amazed at the performance of our patented target snapper hooks. These are fitted to all of our traces. The reports are of fantastic catches and almost zero gut hooking of undersized fish. This means any undersized fish or unwanted fish can easily be released to grow and breed. They are the most environmentally friendly fish hooks in the world. So if you're thinking of getting into long lining, do yourself and the fishery a favour. Get a PFK long line. They are simply the best.